This film is the third of a three-part series for iBiology on improving your scientific presentations. The first two films introduced a different approach, the assertion evidence approach, for presentations. What it is, why to use it, and then how to incorporate it into a research presentation. This third film focuses on an important aspect of presentations, and that is delivery. And in particular, how do you exude confidence in your delivery? Now, I have had the fortune of teaching scientific presentations over the past 30 years on four continents, 17 countries, and more than 100 institutions, laboratories, companies, universities, and agencies. And by far, the number one question that young scientists and engineers ask me is, how do I handle nervousness? Now, they don't ask this question in front of the big crowd. Rather, they catch me in the hallway and they ask, and to that question, I have the same answer. In the days before the presentation, think positively. Just as a professional tennis player will imagine a shot going in a certain spot, you too, in your presentations, should imagine success. The audience understanding your results, for instance. On that day of the presentation, arrive early. I cannot tell you how many times arriving early has saved me from embarrassment. Learning that my computer doesn't hook up with their particular projector, finding that chairs are not where they should be, arrive early, that way, you can remove one of the biggest sources of nervousness, and that is that your presentation slides will not work. And then, just before you speak, think about some advice that Mark Twain shared with a nervous presenter backstage. Don't worry, they're not expecting much. So, those are the three things that I generally tell people on how to handle nervousness before a scientific presentation. And I have to say I've chosen those three because those three things have helped me. But what I would also say is, is how do I handle nervousness is not your best question. The better question to ask is, how do I attain confidence when I present? And I'm talking about the confidence of the neuroscientist, Jill Bolte-Taylor, or the physicist, Brian Cox. So this question's a little bit different. And if you think about confidence, there are really two types of confidence. There's that confidence that you feel inside, the internal confidence. And then there's that confidence that you project to the audience. Even though inside you might be hurting, to the audience, you can still project that you at least seem confident. So I'd like to talk about those two, and we'll start first with the internal confidence. And I'd like to draw upon my interviews with a number of scientists and engineers who've given excellent presentations to large audiences, such as Jill Bolte-Taylor or Brian Cox. And one of the key ingredients for that internal confidence is having strong content. If you have tested or vetted that content of yours before audiences whom you respect, and that content has withstood those audiences, and in fact received positive responses from those audiences. That will help you with your internal confidence. Second ingredient comes from a short interview I had with Jane Goodall. I happened to meet her at an airport 
and I didn't have much time to speak with her, but I mentioned that I, I have this opportunity to talk about presentations to many young scientists and engineers around the world, and what piece of advice would she give them? And her demeanor changed. She kind of took on a harsh demeanor, and she said, well, it certainly wouldn't be the same piece of advice that someone gave me. And I had this sense that I had just ripped the Band-Aid off an old wound. She said that before her per first presentation, someone had told her to just go up there. You're the expert. And she said that was horrible advice. And then she went on to tell me that she was here touring the United States, and she was giving essentially the same talk at 10 different places. And at each of those places, before the talk, she insisted on 45 minutes by herself so that she could walk through that talk and imagine herself giving it to the crowd. And I thought to myself, my gosh, someone who is that seasoned, if she still needs that amount of preparation, what about the rest of us? Preparation, that I would say is the second ingredient. And then the third ingredient came from the world health statistician, Hans Rosling. And Hans Rosling told me that for him, an important part of internal confidence was focus. What Rosling said is, is before an important talk, he didn't want to, in the minutes before, he didn't want to really speak to anybody. He just wanted to be by himself. And his best analogy for it was, to be like a downhill slalom skier up at the top, just before you take off. And a downhill slalom skier thinks about going here, going here, going here, or going here. And he said for him, that was the same thing, that he wanted to think about exactly where he was going to go. This idea of focus was also one that a young presenter communicated to me, Sheila Patek, before one of her first presentations, which was to more than 800 people. And what she said is, she said, if I had thought about the 800 plus people in the room that day, I never could have done it. Instead, I thought about the science and my passion for the ideas, and I let that carry me. Strong content, preparation, focus. If you will work on those three things, you will bolster your internal confidence. Now, I'm not saying that before a talk, you're not going to feel nervous. There will be audiences, there will be situations in which you will. But, and, and I think something to realize is that the internal confidence is not an on-off switch. A better analogy is that it's a bucket. And the more that you work on those three, the more fluid that is in that bucket. And that the nervousness that you will have is not as much as if you had not done the strong content, the preparation, the focus. So that was a little bit about internal confidence. How about projected confidence? One thing that has amazed me is that I have had students who have given a presentation, former students, and I have watched them, and I have thought, oh my gosh, these students are doing great. And then I think to myself, I must be a really good teacher, that my former students are presenting so well.
But then afterwards, I will talk to these students and they will tell me how nervous they were. And I will think to myself, I must not be a very good teacher because I couldn't see their nervousness. But one thing that I've realized is that even though inside you are hurting, you can mask that discomfort in certain ways and in certain steps that you can take. And so I'd like to come back to Twain and talk about another quotation that he has. And for the moment, disregard the religious implications of this quotation. But Twain talked about the calm confidence of a Christian with four aces. And I think as a presenter, there are four aces that you can play in a presentation to project more confidence. Ace of spades, start strong. On the day of the presentation, arrive early. Make sure that all the equipment is working. And not just your computer and projector, but make sure that the clicker is working so that you are ready to go. One thing that is important to realize is that different rooms have different ghosts. And crazy things that will happen in one room will not happen in another. But in that other room, something else crazy can happen. Be prepared, arrive early. And then, when you've gotten everything ready to go, don't hide out in the bathroom. Rather, meet your audience. Try to find out something from them that you can incorporate into your talk. I see speakers do that. And even though I know exactly what it is that they're doing, I'm always amazed at that particular move that they make. Just meet your audience, try to find out something about them. Even if you don't incorporate it, you have strengthened your hand by meeting that person, becoming in a sense that person's friend or that person becoming your ally. And then when it's time for you to go up, Move up to the stage, stand tall. I like to feel the muscles in the backs of my calves and thighs. I like to feel myself stand as tall as I can in front of the audience. Don't necessarily say anything for a moment. Smile. Smile is a great thing to do because what happens is the audience will smile back and that's a good feedback loop for you. And then when you're ready to speak, make sure that the first syllable that you say is not a. Uh. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times people have undercut such a wonderful moment with a uh or um. Know what you're going to say first. I don't memorize much, but I often have the first sentence committed to memory. And when I say it, I will pause somewhere in the middle at a natural place. And when you pause, and this might sound odd, listen for the HVAC sound in the room, the heating, ventilation, and cooling sound of the room. And love that sound. Embrace that sound. Feel comfortable with that sound so that you don't have this urge to fill that sound with a uh or um. And then when you show that first slide, know that first slide. Don't turn to the slide and read what the title is. And for heaven's sakes, don't turn to the slide when you say your name. You ought to know your name. Know that first slide. Now, on that slide, you should have some kind of image or a sequence of images that orient the audience. And turning to that image, that's a natural turn because you want the audience turned toward that image. Ace of spades, start strong. Ace of hearts, 
reduce the text on slides. And so don't follow PowerPoint's defaults and have all these bullets. Rather, use an approach such as the assertion evidence approach that tries to minimize the text on slides to just the essence of the argument that you are giving. Build your talk on messages, not on topics. Support your messages with visual evidence, not bullet lists. And that visual evidence could be photographs, drawings, diagrams, graphs. Could be a film, could be an equation, could be a short table. But reduce that text on slides so that when you are speaking, the words clearly come from you. You show ownership of your research. Ace of hearts, reduce the text on slides. Ace of diamonds, know what comes next. Now, for me, when I'm at a conference and I'm the second speaker or third speaker in a session, I really don't have the confidence to listen to the previous speakers and to ask them questions. I'm always amazed at those people who do. But for me, I am sitting here thinking about my own presentation. And one thing that I like to do, and it's similar to what Rosling said, is that I like to think about each scene. And so I'll often take a blank sheet of paper and I will sketch thumbnails of the slides, and then the next slide, and then the next slide, and the slide after that, so that I know what comes next. Because if I know what comes next, before I click to that slide, I can make a transition to that scene. And that making of a transition, that projects confidence. Ace of diamonds, know what comes next. Ace of clubs, finish strong. When you're at the end of your talk, have a strong scene on which to end. One that states your main conclusions and then has images of your main arguments to support that conclusion. And then go through those arguments in an efficient way manner. And when you get to the end of those arguments and then you make your closure to end the talk, pause. And before you ask for questions, say the word thank you. Or if you're in Germany, Dankeschön, or if you're in China, Shisha. But give that that audience an opportunity to clap. I find that in conference presentations and research symposiums, it's a coin flip. The speaker might give the audience a chance to clap, but a lot of times the speaker will just rush and ask for questions. And then the audience doesn't know what to do. Do I clap? Or do I ask a question? And so what you end up is, you end up with some tepid applause, as well as then some people maybe trying to voice a question. Don't go there. You want to receive the applause. And in fact, I think it's important that those people who are perhaps not in your field see the experts in your field, see them applaud, say thank you. And then when that applause is dying down, that's when you want to ask for questions. And when you receive questions, know that there are going to be some questions that you cannot fully answer. And so a lot of young scientists and engineers, they will rush that answer and say what it is that they know. But then they'll have a big but and then they'll end that answer with some negative news. A better way to handle it is to pause and start your answer with although. Although I cannot answer everything about the question that you ask, I can say and then finish strong with what it is you do know. 
Ace of clubs, finish strong. If you'll play those four aces in your presentation, you will project confidence. Thank you.